Coming up on TCTV News, Ebola claims yet another victim on U.S. soil. Airfare prices are on the rise again. The teal men's basketball season is off and running. We catch up with a few players. Frigid temperatures continue to grip the U.S. When will it end? The news starts now. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to TCTV News. I'm Taylor Runcer. And I'm Colin Vitale. A 22-year-old French convert to radical Islam has been identified in a propaganda video showing a beheaded American aid worker, as well as the deaths of Syrian soldiers. Paris prosecutioners Francois Moulin identified the man as Maxime Houchard. Houchard has been on the radar of the French authorities since he left for Syria in 2013. President Obama confirmed the slaying of an American aid worker, Peter Kassig, after a cabinet review of the video. Though the majority of the extremist group is from the Middle East, the group is trying to cement its claim on an Islamic empire straddling Iraq and Syria. According to officials, Europe appears to be a fertile ground to find Islamic State supporters, with officials saying thousands of young Europeans have headed off to jihad. A surgeon who contracted Ebola in his native Sierra Leone, who received aggressive treatment at a Nebraska hospital over the weekend, has died. Dr. Martin Selyus' death is a reminder of how deadly the Ebola virus is and how important it is for suspected victims to receive treatment early. 44-year-old Celia was di diagnosed with the virus on November 6th. By the time he arrived at the Omaha hospital on Saturday, he was in extremely critical condition with no kidney function and severe respiratory problems. Dr. Phil Smith, the medical director of the biocontainment unit, stated, We used every possible treatment available to give Dr. Celia every possible opportunity for survival. As we have learned, early treatment with these patients is essential. U.S. airlines are saving tens of millions of dollars every week because of lower prices for jet fuel, which is their largest expense. So why aren't they sharing some of the savings with their passengers? To put it simply, airlines have no compelling reasons to offer any breaks as of now. Planes are full, investors want payout, and new jets are on order. These airlines are taking advantages of the price breaks to strengthen their companies and equipment. In fact, fares are actually rising. In those bag fees implemented in 2008 when fuel prices spiked aren't going away either. This means that those planning to travel for the holiday season won't be skimping on their airfare prices. A parcel delivery company in Bangkok put three packages bound for the United States through a routine x-ray and made a startling discovery. Preserved human parts, including an infant's head, a baby's foot, and an adult heart were packaged for delivery. The body parts were stolen from the medical museum's of one of Bangkok's biggest hospitals, its administrators said Monday. Police Colonel Chumpol Pumpwang said the sender was 31-year-old American tourist Ryan McPherson, who told them he had found the items at a Bangkok night market. It apparently has not been the first, not was not the first brush with notoriety for McPherson, as they had been charged with arranging a fight without a permit and selling the videos for hundreds of dollars each. They were fined and sentenced to community service. Investigators in Bangkok are still looking into this case. Rarely do pageant success stories end in a beauty queen being found dead, but we are sad to report that Maria Jose Alvarado Munoz, who had recently won the Miss Honduras crown back in April, has been found dead along with her sister. Officials say they are 95% certain that the two bodies they found are those of Munoz and her sister. According to the director of the pageant in Honduras, Eduardo Zabla, the two women were last seen last week on their way to attend a party. Munoz was supposed to leave this week to compete in the Miss World pageant in London, England. As the winter season approaches, most residents across the country are getting a taste of what Mother Nature has in store for us. At least five people have died as a result of the recent cold fronts that have been moving across the country. According to some officials in Erie County, New York, at least three of these deaths were caused by residents suffering from cardiac issues while shoveling snow. One death was caused by a major car accident and a man was found dead buried in his car under close to 15 feet of snow. Another round of cold air is expected to hit the Midwest and Northeast later today, so be sure to bundle up and stay warm, Tomcats. Have you ever written a bad review on a hotel? Has that hotel come back and slapped you with an extra charge for it? That's what one hotel in Northern England did to some recent customers. Tony and Jan Jenkinson were surprised to see an unexpected $156 charge on their last credit card bill. They figured it out. It was the Broadway Hotel that was the reason for the extra charge. 
According to the hotel, one of its policies was to charge customers that would leave bad reviews of the hotel for the public. That policy has since been taken down by hotel officials, and the couple has gotten their money back. I guess if you can't say anything nice, use a fake name on the website. This year, Teal College welcomes a new nurse. Christine Cianci takes over for nurse Pam Despo, who retired last year. TCTV catches up with Cianci to discuss her new job and the upcoming flu season. Hey, Christiancy, a nurse in Student Health Center. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm here to ask you some questions about the flu season in Teal. But before we start, I want to... I heard that you are so new for this year. Yes, I oh, am. Yeah. This is my first year at Teal. Um, I've been a school nurse for 12 years at high school, um, and I just transferred over to working at Teal College, and I enjoy it. Oh, okay. So back to about our first season. Do you heard about the Teal plague thing? Definitely. <laughs> we had a lot of teal plague at the uh, beginning of the school year. Mm -hmm. It seems to be calming down a little bit, just in time for flu season. Uh, flu season usually starts the um, end of fall and goes through winter. Um, and things you might see with the flu would be a fever, muscle aches, um, headaches, cough, um, high fever. So those are things with the flu that you have to be careful with. most important thing for not contracting the flu is Flu shot. Flu shots are very important. Um, also, washing your hands. That's like the. That's a very simple thing that you can do to make sure you don't get the flu. Oh, so is the health center provide the flu shot service for students? We don't give the flu shot right on campus. However, I do help to um, set that up for you. Um, all of the pharmacies in the Greenville area uh, get flu shots free of charge, mm -hmm. and you can stop in there um, at your leisure. It's convenient for you. Okay. So, how many students usually drop by to your office because of flu? Like a day? Um, right now, we haven't seen any flu, which is good. Oh. It'll probably be starting soon, though. It was the teal plague, now we'll, we're getting into flu season. But, um, you know, I'm going to say that, you know, if, if everybody can kind of focus on hand, good hand washing and getting a flu shot, maybe we can, you know, reduce the number of kids with flu this year in staff. Okay. So, like, if the student comes to you for flu, then what kind of treatment do you can give? Yeah, the best thing to do if you have the flu, if you're running a fever, mm -hmm. you need to stay in bed, drink lots of fluids, mm -hmm. um, and treat your symptoms. If you're having muscle aches, you want to, you know, Tylenol is the best thing mm -hmm. for muscle aches. Um, if you're, <clears throat> if you have a headache, same thing, Tylenol. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do other than rest and get lots of fluids mm -hmm. and stay away from other people so that you don't make them sick as well. Thank you. So, for the final, can you summarize briefly about some points that you can prevent the flu? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The most, um, for college students, it's, it's very, um, you're at a, an increased risk of getting the flu because you live in close quarters with everyone. It's really important to cover your cough so that you don't spread your germs, uh, wash your hands frequently, and get a flu shot. Those are the most important things. Okay. This was the interview with a new nurse, Christiancy, in Student Health Center, and back to the studio. Charles Manson's future mother-in-law is having second thoughts about her daughter being engaged to a serial killer. 26-year-old Elaine Burton recently received a California marriage license to wed the 80-year-old mass murderer as he continues to serve out his life sentence. Burton's mother talked about her concerns of the marriage to the local media, stating, any mother would be concerned about this. Burton also talked about how her daughter is going to do what she wants to do and that the wedding is inevitable. The couple has yet to announce a date, but the license will expire in February. Russian President Vladimir Putin announced that he is seeking deeper ties with North Korea to help improve regional security. Putin recently met with Korean leader Kim Jong-un on Wednesday to discuss new commitments to the nation. A further deepening of polit political ties and trade cooperation is definitely in the interests of the people of both countries, Putin stated, following with, it's about ensuring regional stability and security. Russia is one of five countries involved in talks with North Korea and its nuclear program. The others are South Korea, China, Japan, and the United States. The United States Senate came to a decision on Tuesday to block a bill proposed by President Barack Obama regarding the National Security Agency. The new legislation, if put in place, would have ended the NSA's collection of American phone records and now deals a huge blow to the president's fight on domestic surveillance. 
The 58-42 vote was just two votes shy of the 60 required to continue debating the bill. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell stated that he opposed the bill because it, quote, hinders the ability of intelligence community analysts to query a database to determine links between potential terrorists. A middle school teacher from Bernalillo, New Mexico, allegedly threatened a student from, with a steak knife for talking during a test. Benjamin Nagurski is currently in jail after threatening the student on Friday. Family members say Nagurski explained the, to the class that the students could work out the test problems with the person sitting next to them. But as the victim started talking, the knife was pulled by Nagurski. The school district officials of Bernie Little Middle School say that Nagurski is on paid administrative leave. Nagurski may face charges of aggravated assault and carrying a weapon on school grounds. Sadly, an 18-year-old college student was found dead inside her dorm at Waynesburg University. Clarabeth De La Cruz was a freshman and a member of the track team at Waynesburg. The Green County coroner stated that De La Cruz was not from the area. The campus police notified the Waynesburg police on Sunday about the incident, and the police said it's an open investigation, but they cannot comment on specific details as of now. Waynesburg police announced that the students on campus should not feel threatened. The student at Waynesburg University are using social media to remember De La Cruz and want to know the truth about the tragedy that took the life of a young college student. Pope Francis confirmed Monday that he will make his first visit to the United States in September of next year. The Pope will be attending an international meeting in Philadelphia on the theme of family as part of an American journey that is also expected to include a stop in New York. The Pope's visit to the city of brotherly love will come at a pivotal moment for the Roman Catholic Church as weeks later bishops are scheduled to hold a critical meeting at the Vatican. This meeting could make final changes in the church's stance on issues like homosexuality and divorcees receiving communion. Francis's visit to Philadelphia is expected to draw as many as a million people to a mass on the Benjamin Franklin Parkway in the heart of the city. A woman from New Hampshire has turned herself in to authorities after being on the run for a decade on Monday in Lancaster, New Hampshire. Genevieve Kelly took her eight-year-old daughter Mary and fled to Central America after Kelly attempted to prove that her ex-husband harmed the child. Mary turned 18 in February and she no longer had to go through the family court. Kelly states that her daughter is safe and her lawyer said that she wants to face a jury about her custodial interference charge. It's beginning to look like a winter wonderland out there. Have we got any more snow headed our way? Ron L. Hunt has your latest weather updates. The way it's looking right now, it's not looking too good. Actually, I'm already thinking about Christmas rather than Thanksgiving as we're getting some weather dropping very low. We're going to be looking to hit down perhaps to 10 degrees, maybe a tad bit lower. Not looking in negatives unless we're looking at the wind chill, but we do have a good chance looking into our daylight. As we're looking, we're going to have a little bit of 54 degrees coming up this weekend, but still dropping back down 20 degrees lower the next day. I will give you more later on in the newscast. Thanks, Ronell. Now up next is your weekly entertainment update with Trent. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Good evening, I'm Trent Kiesling and welcome to TCTV Entertainment News. The singer Jay Chow from Taiwan announced officially and publicly about his romance through the official micro blog. Chow showed photos of his lover Hannah Quinlan, a model, in order to share his pleasure with fans. In just less than three months, Chow has a little time to prepare for his wedding that will be held in January of next year. Chow and Quinlan have been to Europe for their wedding photos. Chow, an only child in his family, hopes to have a son. Chow said, quote, I want to be a father by the time I'm 36 years old. When my child is 20 and I'm 56, I will have a wonderful family and a child that can come see my concert. 38-year-old Russian actor Evgenev Spaev cut off his genitals. Spaev performed the in the filmography Burnt by the Sun 2 so that his showbiz will be a lot better. The only thing is, he wants to be a woman. Because of this tremendous pain, Sapiev ran, uh, ran to his neighbor, Arkhiv Tipkinov, for help and is fortunate to be safe. Tipkinov said Sapiev looked like a ghost because of, of his cadaverous color and his hands were very bloody. 
Sapiev expressed that he wanted to become a woman when he was extremely young. There were four times that he has tried to change his gender, but he dared not to hurt himself, until this time. He made up his mind through the excessive amount of painkillers and a knife. Some sad news that we have to report today. TV writer and producer Glenn Larson passed away at the University of California Los Angeles Medical Center after some complications from esophageal cancer. According to his son, James Larson wrote and produced multiple TV series such as Battlestar Galactica, Knight Rider, and Magnum P.I. Also, he co-composed the theme songs for some of his own produced shows, such as a sampled tune from Knight Rider and the orchestral music in Battlestar Galactica. Larson was nominated three times for an Emmy, including a Grammy for Battlestar Galactica, and received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1985. Our thoughts and prayers go out to him and his family. On a more positive note, Grey's Anatomy actor Patrick Dempsey accepted an award for his productive work helping cancer patients. Dempsey was awarded the Maine Creative Industries Award, formerly known as McDreamy. He was inspired by his mother's battle with ovarian cancer, which helped him find the Patrick Demp which helped him found the Patrick Dempsey Center for Cancer Hope and Healing. The award is given by a nonprofit Maine Center for Creativity. There needs to be more people like Patrick Dempsey. Make sure to help and support people you may know or loved ones who are battling with cancer. U2 frontman Bono has injured his arm while riding a bicycle in New York City. Bono was riding his bike in Central Park when he fell and now his arm will require surgery to repair. The band's guitarist, The Edge, bassist Adam Clayton, and drummer Larry Mullen posted on the news of the band's website on Sunday. They would not say when or how the accident happened, but the band stated they will have to reschedule their planned week-long appearance on NBC's Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Model and TV host Janice Dickinson has stated that she was sexually assaulted by Bill Cosby in 1982. Dickinson said she met Cosby in Lake Tahoe after her agent introduced him, hoping she could get a job on The Cosby Show. After dinner, Dickinson and Cosby were in their hotel room and he gave her some wine and a pill. She told Entertainment Weekly that she had asked for the pill after she was having some stomach pains. Cosby was never criminally charged in any case, settled a civil suit with another woman over an alleged incident two years before. Cosby has remained silent about the recent accusations as an attorney stated, issued a statement saying his client will not dignify a decade-old discredited claims about sexual abuse with the response. Netflix plans to expand Australia to explain. Netflix plans to expand Australia and New Zealand in March. The California-based company has about 53 million subscribers in the U.S. and internationally. Netflix grew to Canada in 2010, Latin America in 2011, and the European countries in 2012. In the most recent quarter, subscriber growth fell short of the company forecast due to the price increase for the U.S. Netflix is, al Netflix is also dealing with a tougher competition from Amazon and Hulu. HBO is also planning the internet package for next year. That does it for the entertainment for this week. Make sure to stay tuned in because we have Paul with sports. We'll be right back. Do not go anywhere. Good evening, Tom Katz, and welcome to another edition of TCTV Sports. I'm Paul Connolly. Here's what you missed. Pittsburgh Steelers have decided to release a fan favorite, LeGarrette Blunt, on Tuesday. Blunt was cut less than 24 hours after he walked off the field early before the end of the game on Monday. Steelers defeated the Titans in a 27-24 victory in Tennessee. Blunt's playtime has been diminishing over the past few weeks, while his good friend Le'Veon Bell has been getting more playtime. Blunt was signed to the Steelers in March with a $3.85 million deal. He only had a combined 266 yards and two touchdowns this season. Jason Collins, the NBA's first openly gay player, has announced his retirement on Wednesday. Collins started his NBA career with the New Jersey Nets in 2001 and claims it has been an exhilarating 18 months since he came out as the first openly gay player in the four major Northern American professional leagues. The 35-year-old played 22 games last year and was nowhere to be found on an NBA roster this season. University of Georgia running back Todd Gurley suffered a torn ACL in his left knee on Saturday. An MRI confirmed the injury, while surgery date has not been set. The former Heisman Trophy frontrunner was injured on a six-yard run with a little more than five minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Saturday was Gurley's first game back for the Bulldogs after serving a four-game suspension for taking $3,000 for autographed memorabilia and other items over the course of two years. 
Gurley was considered to be one of the top running backs in the country before this injury. Veteran catcher Russell Martin has agreed to a five-year, $82 million deal with the Toronto Blue Jays. The deal, which had been reported by Fox Sports, is pending a physical exam. In 2014, the 31-year-old had a season reminiscent of those at the beginning of his career, batting 290 with 11 home runs and 67 RBIs for the Pittsburgh Pirates. This is a big loss for the Pirates, as many considered Martin to be the heart and soul of the team. The Pirates traded for Yankees backup catcher Francisco Cervelli last week. Pittsburgh will have a big void to fill as Martin led the majors by throwing out 37 attempted base stealers. With his two-year-old son on his lap, Kevin Harvick let him speak into the microphone and tell the world his dad won the NASCAR championship. Harvick stated that winning mattered most under NASCAR's new championship formula and his decision to bolt for buddy Tony Stewart's race, race team was indeed the right call. Harvick recalls the Sprint Cup as his best moment, using a relentless dash through the field to win Sunday's season finale at Homestead Miami Speedway. Harvick wrapped up his third victory of this chase and fifth of the season, taking one final spin with his fifth checkered flag of the year. The Detroit, Tri or excuse me, the Detroit Tigers finalized the $68 million four-year deal with Victor Martinez on Friday. The Tigers decided to keep its hitter in the middle of their lineup after Martinez finished second in the AL MVP race this year. Martinez hit 335 with 32 home runs and 103 RBIs, helping Detroit to its fourth straight AL Central title last year. As the Tigers agreed to its lucrative deal with Martinez, Detroit showed its willingness to spend big in pursuit of their first World Series championship since 1994. Martinez is, expe is expected to make $14 million next season and $18 million annually over the following three years. Juan Carlos Stanton agreed to a record deal with the Miami Marlins on Monday when he signed for $325 million for a 13-year contract extension. Stanton's deal includes a no-trade clause and he will be able to opt out after six years. This tops some big contracts in the past, like Miguel Cabrera, who signed with the Detroit Tigers for $292 million, and the A-Rod deal that topped out at $275 million on a 10-year contract with the Yankees before the season in 2008. Dwight Howard is in some hot water as he is currently under investigation for child abuse. Howard's ex-wife, Royce Reed, claims that Howard beat his son with a belt in the summer of 2014. Reed recently filed allegations with Georgia authorities after police in Florida didn't have enough evidence to build a case. Dwight says he will continue to act in the best interests of his children and do whatever is necessary to protect them. The Teal men's basketball season has begun. TCTV reporter Christian Kafka was able to speak to a few of the players about their strategy. Hi, I'm Christian Kafka. I'm here with Jermaine and Luca of the basketball team. Um, Jermaine, uh, last year you guys finished fifth in the conference. Um, what do you guys think you can improve on from last year? Uh, from last year, we uh, towards the end of the season, we started pressing more, so we feel like we use that as advantage this year, especially with the incoming class we got. So we feel like our press is going to be a huge advantage in part of our game for this year. So hopefully, we can take off with that. Right, cool. And, uh, I'm looking at um, you guys playing Penn State Beaver for your first game. Um, what do they do well as a team? Uh, they press all the time, so we're going to have to, these next few days of practice, going to work on like our press, the press offense, make sure we don't turn the ball over, make sure we take good shots when we break the press. So that's like the main thing we're going to have to work on this week. Okay. Could so, you go into a little like what like, the press offense is like? Uh, well, there's usually like three guards up top, two guards back in the, uh, back in the full, uh, front court, and uh, pretty much the key to breaking the press is getting someone in the middle. So if we get people in the middle and they look down the court, that's how we get easy layups, easy shots. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Well, you heard it from Luke and Jermaine. Good luck with their first game. Back to you. Thanks, Christian. That does it for this edition of TCTV Sports. When we come back, we have Ronell with the weather. Stay tuned. Hi, thank you for tuning in to TCTV News. This is Ronnell Hunt. I'll be bringing you your weather for today. We take a look right over into that western area alliance. We're going to be sitting pretty nice for a winter starting hitting hard pretty right now. We're going to be looking at 20 degrees such as Detroit. And we're going to look at some others all around that western edge right there. We're going to be focusing on 20 to 25 degrees. And if we come over to our eastern region, we're going to be a little bit higher such as Elwood City right there. We're going to see 23 degrees, Beaver 24, Calcutta 22 degrees, and Mercer 20 degrees. 
All right, let's see what's going on with our wind chill. Cleveland and all the areas right over there, you're going to be looking about dropping 16 down to 9 if you're right over there. 9 degrees coming from that southern region right there. That whole area from that west is going to be getting some wind chill coming from that southern area. And as we come over onto our eastern region, we're going to be looking from that southwestern region. We're going to be having some wind chill coming, knocking us down. We're going to be ranging about the normal an average area of about 15 to 14 degrees. Take you a little bit deeper, focusing on our wind. Now let's take a look at what's going to be happening, blowing right into our faces. Cleveland, 25 miles per hour. Uh, we're going to be looking right down there, I believe around Akron, 24 miles per hour. Beaver, 22, and Newcastle. We're going to be looking at roughly 17 miles per hour. If you guys are around that area, particularly around my house, look out for that weather coming. That wind's going to be bringing you a little bit of chill. All right, now over to our seven, seven, seven day forecast. Wednesday and Thursday, 29 degrees, 23 degrees. Going to be going to our lowest of 11 degrees. Friday and Saturday, we're going to be clear on Saturday. Thank goodness for that weekend. 37 degrees, going to jump up a little bit. Sunday and Monday, 48 degrees. The highest that we're going to get in those seven days, 54 degrees. Unfortunately, we're going to drop close down to 20 degrees lower, going from 54 down to 37 with a low two degrees before that at 35 degrees. That's all for your TCTV news weather. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Ron Al. And before we wrap up here, Anais Bordier and Samantha Futerman have the same laugh and the same freckled cheeks. The pair tease, poke, and prod each other like they've grown up together, but they didn't. Neither woman knew that she had an identical twin sister until less than two years ago. Bordier, who grew up in Paris, was contacted by a friend one day who had sent her a screenshot of a YouTube video featuring a girl identical to Bordier. At first, she thought it was herself, later to discover that it wasn't. Bordier then dropped the subject for a while until another friend sent another screenshot of the same girl. Bordier then did some digging and found out Futerman's name. Gathering up the courage, she sent Futerman a Facebook message saying, I don't want to be too Lindsay Lohan. Well, but how to put it? I was wondering, where were you born? The two had been born in South Korea and adopted by different families. The two had finally been brought back together and now exchanged multiple text messages a day. Futerman stated, we're not worried about being separated again. They may have been torn apart as babies, but they say they are now bonded forever. That's all we've got for TCTV News. I'm Taylor Runcer. And I'm Colin Vitale. Make it a good one, Tomcats.